Good Monday evening. I hope you had a wonderful day in the Lord. God is worthy to be praised in the evening time, in the morning, when we wake up, when we go to sleep, and all the hours in between. We are in 2 Samuel 8. I always get these dates mixed up because I'm thinking about the dates, September 9th, but we're in the 8th chapter of 2 Samuel. Okay. And this theme came up. I just hung up the phone a few minutes ago with one of my girlfriends from high school. And she just had a birthday a few days ago. I was like, happy birthday, girl. And we were tripping because you're like, wow, we were just 18. We were just in high school. We were just in college. We, we were just, you know, having our first child now you know our kids are in college and it's blowing our mind and of course we're sounding like the old people we would listen to when we were teenagers we thought like oh my goodness 50 years old so old oh they're ancient and i reminded her we are now the age our mothers were when we were in high school whoa so of course the teenagers our kids are really looking at us like we're antiquated but something in 2 Samuel 8 spoke to me, and it's repeated twice in verse 6 and verse 14. And it says, And the Lord preserved David with so ever, wherever he went, the Lord preserved him. And in another version, it says, Everywhere David went, the Lord gave him victories. Everywhere we go, everywhere our feet is placed, Everywhere the Lord assigns us, the Lord will preserve us. Like I said, you know, there's a lot of focus on youth and preserving our, you know, looks, what we think our looks, but it's all vanity. Like I said, we're just wind and, and we vanish. And whatsoever we do for Christ, that's what's going to last and carry on um, to the next generation, the love of God that we impact right now with the young people now, the old people, the babies, whoever, leave our mark that way. And the mark is just for the glory of God. It's not to make a name for ourselves. I was talking to these uh, preschool teachers and um, early childhood teachers on our walk after school today. And I teach, you know, the upper grades, the, the, the teenagers, the ones about to go to high school, all the way down to the babies, the pre-K. And uh, they're like, oh my goodness, Michelle, how do you do it? And I said, um, there's three things you have to be in order to impact or leave some type of print in their lives. You have to be unoffendable. You have to be unembarrassable, right? <laughs> you know, they're gonna talk about you, whatever. You can't take things to heart and be sensitive and have your feelings hurt, unoffendable, unembarrassable, and you have to have a passion to see them succeed. That's what it's going to take. So even if they're like, oh, I'm not trying to hear that. And believe me, I knew that my son, you know, was like, oh, my goodness, mom, you know, do we have to do these scriptures? But you better believe that that was planted in him. You would see him, you know, on his phone and, you know, leaving and, oh, okay, I got to go with my friends. But know that in those lonely hours, in those hours when he he has no person around him, the word of a God is going to come back to him, right? And that's going to preserve his path for wherever the Lord would have him to go when I'm not no longer on the scene. Amen. And that's the preservation power of the Lord. And again, people ask, what's the fountain of youth? Because we are in September 9th. Proverbs 9, 9 and 10 talks about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? And the knowledge of the holy is paramount. For me, thy days shall be multiplied. People want to live, you know, a long time. But when we put God first, then he will increase our days according to his will. And the years of thy life shall be increased because God will be pleased and, you know, he would have more work and he knows our end from the beginning. So even if we eat perfectly, even if we exercise three hours a day, even if we, you know, 
follow this regime or not, God already has it pre-planned and we can't do anything about it, right? We're not here to be forever uh, in, in this world. No, we're here to do his will. And again, in 2 Samuel 8, David, you know, grew in popularity and favor. Um, the Moabites brought David's servants and brought gifts in verse 2. And he was increased and he was brought forth. But something in verse 7 or chapter 7, David wanted to build a house for the ark. But the Lord said, no, I have something better for you. I want to build a kingdom that will not end. We're part of the kingdom of God, right? Even if we're not here any longer, we are in an eternal entity and we're forever with our Lord. So whether we're here or whether we're in the fold of the Lord, we are at peace and we are knitted together in love, even if our loved ones have gone on to be with the Lord. And that's a blessed assurance and a promise that we will see them again and we are one, even here or on the other side. Amen. So let's have that, uh, that joy in our hearts and continue to do the will of the Lord and enjoy his presence forevermore. Have a wonderful evening in the Lord and get great rest.